All right, what's going on guys, Dan Watson, and I'm pretty stoked to show you this new feature in Adobe Lightroom. A couple of months ago, Adobe announced super resolution for Adobe Photoshop, and I actually made a video showing you how to use that new feature, and actually really showing you how to take low resolution files like the Sony a7S III and Canon EOS R6, which are 12 and 20 megapixels, and make them look even better than large resolution files from other cameras on there with more detail, less noise on them, and really made a huge difference. But a bunch of you had some questions and suggestions in that, so I wanna show you the methodology for getting the best results in this and when it works and when it doesn't. Plus, now it's natively in Lightroom, so uh, for me, I do pretty much 100% of my photos editing in Lightroom and then maybe I'll take it to Photoshop and post. So being able to do this without leaving the software at all and also being able to do it to a photo after I've already edited it is absolutely huge for me. So I know there are other softwares that can actually do this, including Photoshop, but being able to do it in your native editor without having to buy anything else is absolutely awesome. So what Super Resolution does is it takes your images and scales them using AI and algorithms to increase the amount of detail in that scaling process and hopefully make these files look much better than they did in their lower resolution versions. And it brings you four times the number of pixels. So if you have a 12 megapixel image, it's now a 48 megapixel image. If you have a 60 megapixel Sony a7R 4 file, then it is now 240 megapixels, which is just insane. So let's get into this, show you all of the details on it, when you should use it, how you use it, and everything else you need to know. All right, so first let's take a look at how to actually do this. So here is a photo shot with the Sony a7R 4 and the 50 millimeter f1.2. You can actually see this photo has some issues going on on this bottom portion right here. So I wanna see how that handles it in the scaling process. But this is a huge resolution file already. We're gonna take it, go to photo, and then we're going to go to enhance. And this is where Adobe will start to do its magic right here. It will give you a preview. This is just a preview file, but you can kind of take a look at it and see if you can notice a difference. And to my eyes, I can absolutely see a difference between these two images here. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, it says six seconds. It usually takes me longer than that on a file that's this large, but we'll do it right here. And now we have a brand new DNG file that's sitting right next to our raw file. We can go ahead and click on this. You can see the resolution is absolutely insane. And then Adobe automatically added the word enhance to the end of it. And then the raw file changes to a DNG file right here. So in order to keep apples to apples, what I've done is actually scaled up an image inside of Photoshop to the exact same resolution, not using the enhancement feature. So you can kind of see this. So if we go in here and compare both files, first of all, I have actually compared file sizes to this. The difference is pretty crazy. The original raw file was about 60 megs. The new high resolution DNG file is 600 megs but that is still short of this scaled Photoshop image right here, which is over a gig. So it is a massive increase in file size on this if you do actually wanna do it. So let's go ahead and zoom into these out of focus areas right here, and we'll just make sure that the scaling did a pretty good job. And yes, I am not really seeing any difference between these two files in this area at all. And if we start to go into the more detailed area of the rings, I don't know how this is gonna work with compression on YouTube, but I am seeing just a bit of difference. It is not massive by any means. You would really have to zoom in here and start analyzing it, but there is definitely more detail in this enhanced image right here. So again, we're seeing a pretty slight result, but an increase nonetheless in these high resolution a7R4 files. Now here's another example that wildlife photographers might appreciate. So this is handheld in the field, in my backyard. So I wanted to kind of see how this would work. And this is again on the A7R4 right here with a Tamron 70 to 180. And I am absolutely able to tell the difference between these two files, the one on the left, does look better. However, the difference is fairly mild. Again, I'm not seeing this massive improvement. Uh, if I had to pick one of them, I would still pick the image to the left, but I don't think this is really a night and day difference is gonna make your images scale 10 times the size or anything like that. So 
again, with these A7R4 files, I am seeing a difference, but it tends to be pretty slight. So this next set of images were shot on the Sony A7C, which is a 24 megapixel camera. So a little bit more in that middle range of probably a lot of cameras that we have. So this is where things start to get really interesting though. But before I show you that, I gotta say guys, a couple of years ago, I redid my website completely using Squarespace and the results have been awesome. I was able to add like private galleries and selling products and calendars with built-in reservations systems and it is so crazy easy to get started so definitely go check them out. So obviously Squarespace makes it crazy easy to build a new site with templates, customizable blocks for adding in new content and even the ability to search through thousands of images to help you get started. And there are just some insane tools for photographers and videographers from custom galleries that allow you to password protect them for sharing privately with clients and the ability to add in e-commerce to be able to sell your products online as well. I was able to upload my camera guide so I could sell them straight through my site in just a matter of minutes. There's also a full scheduling system so you can actually have your clients sign up directly for their sessions online. So go ahead and check them out guys. It's completely free to get started. Just use my coupon code learning cameras when you build something awesome and you can go live with that site today. So let's zoom in on these images and kind of analyze them a little bit. And this was just an incredible car. And looking between these two images, again, I can really start seeing the difference, but I can actually see it a lot more not only am I just seeing a little bit of difference in texture, but I can actually read numbers on this image on the left that I just wouldn't be able to on the image on the right. And again, there's not a massive difference in this, but it is definitely more noticeable now than in those A7R4 files. So as we start to get into these lower resolution cameras, I am starting to see a pretty big difference between these files. So here's another example, again shot with 24 megapixels and Zooming in on this, I would say I can definitely tell the difference between the image on the left and the image on the right. The image on the left just looks much better, especially around this GMC logo right here. It is absolutely a night and day difference for me. So right around this 24 megapixel mark is where I start to see this feature adding some real benefit to the detail. All right, so now I'm gonna blow you away. So these images right here were shot on the Sony A7S III, so a very low resolution file starting with, and just look at the difference between these files. Once you start zooming in, there is no question that the image on the left looks so much better than the image on the right. I, I don't even think I would use this image uh, zoomed in like this for sure, whereas this image on the left is very usable. So yes, when it gets into this amount of detail and when you're dealing with these low resolution images right here, this is where Adobe Super Resolution really shines and can deliver some amazing results. So if you're somebody with a low resolution camera like 12 to 24 megapixels, that is going to be the sweet spot for this feature right here. And that is why I showed you in the last video why using these low resolution cameras with this feature right here made them look so amazing. Now, another question you guys had is what happens when you just don't have a whole lot of detail in the file to begin with? So here's an example right here. And I don't know if the camera just missed focus or whatever, but uh, this was a bird in flight. I was shooting at an 8,000th of a second. So shutter speed was fast enough. And honestly, if I start to zoom in here, the images just don't look great. There is not a huge difference between these files right here. I can see a little bit more detail, I would say, and the feathers on the image on the left, but there is not a huge difference between these two files. And here's another example of an image I shot at an extremely slow shutter and the movement between the car and me and my car was not perfect. So there was a whole lot of motion blur. It's not really a usable image on here. And the difference between these files is pretty much unnoticeable. So for sure, if you want to use this feature, you do need to make sure you have original detail in your image. If it's blurry or anything like that, this is not going to improve that quality. Now, another great question you guys had is what happens if you're dealing with these smaller sensor cameras versus full frame cameras? So here is an image shot with a drone. And one of the problems with these drones is that they really are small sensors. And so that means that a lot of things like leaves and fine detail just don't come out looking that great. They can tend to be a little bit muddy. So I upsampled both of these files right here, the right one just using Photoshop and the left one using the super resolution feature. And for me, I think I can absolutely see a lot more detail in these leaves 
they just look a little bit more like leaves and less like just a muddy blurry mess on that so this is something that's always been just a bit of an issue for me whenever I shoot with drones and this does seem to be making a pretty big difference. So the fact that this feature is now built into Lightroom is just huge for me and being able to do it even after I've edited the photo, that is great. Um, obviously guys, you wanna start with a very detailed image and then the lower resolution the file that you're starting with, uh, even if you've cropped or if you're starting with a low resolution camera, that is where you're gonna start seeing massive differences between these two files. But I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you're gonna be using this feature, if you could notice the differences right here. I have a whole bunch of stuff that just came in this week, so things are about to get absolutely insane. I'm so excited. Make sure you're subscribed. Hope you guys are doing amazing, and I'll see you soon in a new video.